Hello, welcome back to Data Leaps. My name is Li Ping. This is the Diary of a Solution Architect. Today, we are talking about how to interview at Microsoft as a cloud solution architect or technical specialist. If you don't know the difference between the two roles, please check out this other video I've made about the different types of architects. And essentially, technical specialist is pre-sales and cloud solution architect is a mixture between pre-sales and post-sales. But the interview process is quite similar. So to start out with, you'll have a talent acquisition interview that's basically just to understand your experience, your expectations, and so on and so forth. And then you'll go into a 10 to 15 minutes interview with either a technical specialist or cloud solution architect. This is a baseline, very, very simple interview about what you've done and some basic questions about data and AI based on your spike. So if you're a data engineer, data platform, or um, BI person, you get asked a lot about the data platform side of things. And if you're a data scientist, you get asked about ML and Gen AI side of things. This is a baseline in interview because the next few rounds will happen in parallel. Back in my days, the next four rounds happen in a single assessment center day. And um, these days they probably scatter around um, as virtual interviews, but they are all they all are happening in parallel, meaning if I am your interviewer for technical assessment, I don't know the results for your technical presentation interview. So the baseline interview of 10 to 15 minutes is a really good way to make sure that you meet the minimum requirements for cloud solution architect or technical specialist before putting you forward for at least four hours of other interviews. And this is to save yourself time as well as the time of the interviewer. You don't necessarily need any prep for the 10 to 15 minute technical interview, just to understand what you are doing and what you've previously done. Be very clear on what your spike is about should be good enough to pass that interview. Once you passed, you have a few interviews, the hiring manager interview, the cross-functional interview, the cross-functional interview back in my days were the interview with the salespeople. Now, depending on the role that you're interviewing for uh, and depending on your region, you might not have a cross-functional interview with the salesperson. And you definitely have a technical assessment interview as well as the technical presentation um, interview. So so for the hurry manager interview and the cross-functional interview, it's pretty easy. Like to me, it was just really nice chat with different people. What you need to do is to be yourself. A lot of it is uh, competency-based and cultural fit type of questions. So they want to make sure that you are culturally a good fit. And you also want to reverse interview them to make sure that like Microsoft is a good company in terms of cultural fit for you. And because a lot of these questions are competency-based, you want to think about the working examples beforehand, like things like working with uh, difficult people, having disagreement with your coworkers or uh, conflict resolution or working with tight deadlines. These kind of things are all very important. You want to have variety of examples for different uh, competency questions um, to show that you have experience in, in working with different people, different type of situations and so on and so forth. Again, these are not technical questions. Competency-based questions are very um, kind of experience-based and you want to draw from your personal experience and talk about what works for you and uh, what you learned from your experience specifically. 
four technical interviews, and this is the interview that a lot of people trip up. So what you want to do is to start with what you know, right? Be very clear on what you are good at. Nobody is good at absolutely everything. For Azure Data and AI, there's so many services and so many technologies. In it's impossible to be level four hundred across everything. You have like front end of Power BI analysis services, back end of like Cosmos, uh, Synapse, Fabric, uh, streaming like Event Hub, IoT Hub, Streaming Analytics, Azure Data Explorers, and you have cognitive services and Azure AI Studio. It's impossible to be good at absolutely everything, but to be very clear on what you are good at, what you bring to the table is important. It's also important to prepare and read about what Microsoft has recently invested in, what's a current flagship product and what's the latest offering, just to show that you're interested in joining the company and you've spent time and effort understanding what company's investment is. It's also good to know how your tech maps to the Azure tech. So say you come from an AWS background, you would want to know, okay, you you build a data pipeline using uh, Airflows, uh, EC2 or Lambda or EMR, whatever it is, you would understand or you would like to elaborate how does the tech stack that you used in AWS will map to the Microsoft tech stack. That will help your case in saying, I understand my tech. I've also spent my time investigating how the Microsoft landscape looks like. You don't have to know Azure inside and out. It helps if you do, but it's more important that you know your tech domain really well, whether that's data analyst, data engineering, or machine learning or gen AI, you need to be very good at engineering principles of what you specialize in. And if you know how that maps to Azure, great. If you know the latest offering of Microsoft or feature release, great. But you need to get the basics of your tech domain right. Like if you're specializing in data engineering, you would need to know how to implement data quality. You need to know how to implement CI, CD. These kind of things are really important, not necessarily the Azure specific uh, domain knowledge. And then if you don't know the answer, please do not throw something at the wall. People who are in the interview asking you the questions know the answer to those questions, which means if you throw something at the wall and hope it sticks, you will get caught, right? I have coworkers who are very good at asking follow-up questions and, and you'll find yourself backed into a corner, um, not knowing the answer by kind of beating around the bush or giving really, really long answers and hope one of the sentences you say will hit the mark. If you don't know, it's better to say, I don't know, it's not that my area of expertise is completely okay. Say things like, I'll find out later. And it's better than giving a made-up answer. The reason for that is because we are assessing you as a cloud solution architect or technical specialist. The goal is to see how you are as a TS or CSA in front of a customer. We want you to say, I don't know the answer, I'll find out for you afterwards and follow up with that instead of just giving your customer a answer that you made up on the spot. And that's not necessarily great for anyone. For the technical presentation, again, it's the same thing where we are assessing you as a, a CSA or TS in terms of presentation skills in front of a customer. So you want to be good at a few things. One is 
time management. If you're given 40 minutes, one hour, you want to stick to that 40 minutes and one hour not end your presentation too early or run out of your time. And then you want to be very familiar with the content that you put in the presentation and know why certain content is there. I've interviewed people before where they put two different services for SQL serving layer. They cannot explain why those icons were there or what's the difference between the two SQL serving layers. And that's not very good. Again, as a Cloud Solution Architect or TS, we're expecting you to be able to put uh, architecture together and explain why certain icon is there instead of putting a architecture together and not knowing uh, why you have two parallel services doing the same job. And then things like your presentation skills, did you communicate your ideas clearly? Uh, did you handle questions right? It's not necessarily just you know your tech, but also the way you're handling questions. Again, it's perfectly, perfectly okay to say, I don't know. But it's also a problem if every question people ask, your answer is, I don't know, I'll find out for you later. Because as per the assessment, uh, Microsoft would want people to be able to handle the job independently instead of having to get a coworker to reverse shadow them all the time or, um, you know, hire you, but then you have to go get help afterwards all the time. That's not necessarily a purpose of a cloud solution architect or technical specialist. You want to be, they want you to be independent at the job. So uh, you should be able to answer a lot of questions. But then if you don't know the answer, it's also okay to say, I don't know, I'll find out for you. All in all, what the interview rounds are trying to do is to make sure, one, you're a cultural fit. Two, you're technically good enough to be independent as a cloud solution architect or technical specialist and don't have to be a tandem with someone else all the time. And three, you are able to do sales, uh, especially technical sales. So like presentations, demos, and communicate your ideas clearly, as well as answer customers' questions honestly and uh, professionally as well. This is the tips for Microsoft interview process for Cloud Solution Architect and Technical Specialist. If you have any questions regarding the interview process, please comment to let me know. If you are interested in the interview process for any other vendors, please also comment to let me know. Thank you. Thank you for watching Data Leaps. If you think the content is useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it.